Hello grade tens. How often do you decide to do something because you think the chances are good? Shortly we'll be joining two friends as they explore relative frequency while rolling a dice. Let's discuss some terms first. When we calculate probability, we are calculating the probability of an event occurring in theory. We call this theoretical probability. What happens in real life is experimental probability. We also call this relative frequency. We calculate relative frequency by doing an experiment and using the results. Now we will see how Jared and Rufilwe disagree about which number is most difficult to roll in a dice. Through an experiment, they discuss relative frequency in more detail. Let's join them now. Jared and Rufilwe are about to play games. As with most board games, they start by deciding who gets the first turn by throwing the dice. By the way, the correct term for one of these little cubes with numbers on it is a die. The term for two or more of these cubes is dice. But nowadays, most people use the word dice to mean one dice or lots of dice. So, we're going to follow the crowd and use the plural form for the singular two. Okay, first one to throw is six dots. But why always a six? Because six is the hardest number to throw in a dice. Everyone knows that. That's rubbish. Really? Have you noticed how often we've thrown the dice and it hasn't been a six yet? That proves nothing. I mean, it hasn't even landed on a five either. True. But you know what? Let's find out more about this. Let's ask people who we see and see what they think. I don't think that'll prove anything either, but hey. Let's give it a try. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, could you give me a quick answer to a question? Sure. Uh, what's the hardest number to throw on a dice? That should be a six, I think. The hardest number to hit on the dice? Yes. I reckon they're all about the same. Mm, let's see. I think it's a six. I don't know. Any number, I suppose. Definitely the six if you're aiming for it. It's a one. Look at this. Out of 50 people we asked, 41 say they know that a six is the hardest number to throw. Are you convinced now? No, because it doesn't mean that 41 people know that six is the hardest number to throw. It just means that 41 people think or believe it. I reckon we can work this out mathematically. Rifilo and Gerard have uncovered a very popular myth that a six is the hardest number to throw. But what is the mathematical probability here? What is the chance of throwing a six? Well, we need to start by asking, if I throw this dice, what could it land on? Well, it could land on a one, a two, a three, a four, five, or a six. This means that there are six possible outcomes. Each outcome has an equally likely chance of occurring, as nobody has deliberately weighed the dice to fall on any particular number. We're trying to find the probability of throwing a six. So we can put throwing a six in brackets after P for probability. We know that the number of possible outcomes is six, but only one side of the dice has a six on it, so there's only one chance of getting a six. That means the number of favorable outcomes is one. So the probability of throwing a six is one out of six. We call this the theoretical probability of throwing a six. Now, we want to compare this to the probability of throwing other numbers. In other words, we need to know if the probability of throwing a 6 is higher than the probability of throwing any other number. Every time you throw the dice, there are 6 possible outcomes. So the denominator which shows the total number of possible outcomes will always be 6. And each number only appears on the dice once, so there's only one chance of getting a 5, a 2, a 4, a 1, or a 3. So every time the number of ways of getting the favorable outcome is one. This means that the probability of getting any one of the numbers is always one-sixth. So theoretically, the probability of throwing a six is no greater or smaller than the probability of throwing any other number. We threw the dice six times, right? Right. If the probability of throwing a six is not greater or smaller than the probability of throwing any other number, Theoretically, one of the throws should have been a one, one of them a two, one a three, one a four, 
one is five, and one is six. Right, but that didn't happen. See, we got three threes, a two, a four, and a one, but no sixes and no fives. This is why we call it theoretical probability. What actually happens may be very different from the theoretical probability. They only threw the dice six times, so you could say they did six trials in an experiment and their results for six trials was zero out of six, but they did very few trials. Let's see what happens if we throw the dice 24 times. 24 is six times four. Okay. That's a much better idea. The theoretical probability of getting a six is still one out of six, or four out of 24. So let's see if they get four sixes. After all of that, we only got two sixes. So their experiment with 24 throws only gave them two sixes out of 24 throws. That's one in 12 throws. That's still quite different from the theoretical probability of one in six throws. But 1 in 12 is closer to the theoretical probability than 0 in 6. Let's increase the number of throws and see if we'll get closer to the theoretical probability. That's a good idea. Let's do lots and lots of throws. 4. 4. 2. 1. They threw the dice 24 times and recorded the number it landed on each time using tallies. We threw the dice 600 times and added up the frequency for each number. These are our results. They did well. Now, can you make a conclusion about the experiment? So, how do you think we did? I think the more often we threw the dice, the closer we got to the theoretical probability. That's it. Look at our table. Each number came up about a hundred times. What they've just worked out is the experimental probability because it's based on the actual number of throws in their experiment. It's also called the relative frequency. The frequency of throwing a six relative to the actual total number of throws made. In their experiment, there were 600 trials, and out of those, 100 of them were fours. So we can say that the relative frequency of getting a four is 100 out of 600, which can be simplified to one out of six or one sixth. Now let's look at the relative frequency of getting a six in this experiment. Again, it was out of 600 trials conducted, but this time the number of times the event happened was 111. That's just a little more often than 1 out of 6 times, but still very close to 1 out of 6 times. But not every experiment on a small sample will come out to exactly 1 in 6 throws landing on a 6. As we've seen, if you only throw 6 times, you might not even get 1 6. So, the larger your experimental sample is, that is, the more times you throw the dice, the closer the experimental probability gets to the theoretical probability. So, experimental probability, or relative frequency, is the probability we get when we test something out and record what happens in a real situation. It can also be written as a ratio or fraction, but then we record the actual numbers we get from the experiment. The relative frequency of something happening is the number of times the event happens out of the total number of trials conducted. Compare this ratio with the ratio for theoretical probability, the number of favorable outcomes out of the total number of the possible outcomes. Now that we've looked at the relative frequency and experimental probability, let's get back to the chances of throwing a six. Well. With our experiment and by calculating the theoretical probability, I think we've shown that it's not harder to get a six than to get any other number. But then, why do so many people think it's so hard to get a six? Jared's come up with a good question. So let's think about it this way. The probability of getting a six against the probability of getting each of the other numbers, but what's the probability of not getting a six? There are five other numbers, so there's a five out of six chance of not getting a six. That's why people say it's hard to get a six. There's a much bigger chance of not getting a six. That helps to show the difference between theoretical probability and relative frequency. 
Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the task for this section in the Probability Task video. You will also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.